of a national news media. I don't know any of us that live in Chester County that want to be the center of the national news media because that's normally not a good thing. And I apologize in advance that I don't have a picture. But I'm going to have the picture tonight. Many of you have seen the picture that flooded our television broadcast. And when the awful incident Friday morning took place of our kids, our kids, Jeff's kids, they're my kids too. But when that awful incident took place, when that bus overturned, the picture that I saw led by one of my closest friends who just happened to grow up with me in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Many of you know him. He's been here. My good friend Mike Showers and his son David. They did something that most people would not think to happen in a moment such as took place on Friday morning. I'm thankful that Chester County High School students made the news because when the tough got going, they didn't start whining and crying. They reached out and they supported one another. And in the picture that I'll show you anytime you want to see it, I'll bring it in here tonight. And standing over next to the guardrail in one massive circle, a prayer circle. I'm thankful, brethren, that those young people have faith and knowledge in being led by individuals that care for them that they saw it was appropriate in a time of need to gather in prayer. Can you imagine where we would be in our world and in our society today if more people had the attitude of prayer that those teenagers exhibited. Mind you, those were young people who were sophomores, juniors, in high school. And yet they are well, more well behaved than many adults in our society. I'm glad to be from Chester County, Tennessee. Please don't misunderstand that I love the Jackson area too. We're all one big family, brother. I look back on the back row when I see Miss Jeannie's grandson, Connor. And I could go down a litany of lists of people that I know personally. I'm thankful today to God for His protective care over that group of young people in a situation that could have been much worse. Thanksgiving to a large group of people, especially those of us in Chester County, it has a whole new meaning today. But let me move forward. I think Thanksgiving should be the most celebrated holiday of the year. Why? You see, Thanksgiving is not just something that comes on the Thursday in November. As Christians, Thanksgiving should be part of our life every single day that we live. You see, thanksgiving is really exhibit, exhibited in thanksgiving. We show God our gratitude for what He has done for us in the way that we live our life according to how He has directed us in His Word. Mike, I know you didn't know what my sermon was this morning, did you? But don't you think the songs that Mike sung how great thou art, 
Sing those songs of praise. Just sing, God, we know you're great, and here's why. In singing the story of Jesus. Is there anything greater to be thankful for than the story of Jesus? Is there anything greater for us to show our thankfulness and our gratitude to let our minds go back to the pain and the agony that Jesus went through so that we have the hope to eternal life and that we may have our sins washed away. How thankful are we for that? Our brother Jeff read for us from 2 Thessalonians. And Paul begins that <laughs> chapter, chapter 1, writing to the church of the Thessalonians. He says, Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes into this thankful attitude. He says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience, for your faith, and in all your persecutions and tribulations which you endure. You notice what Paul is really thankful for? As Paul speaking to the Thessalonians, not only in just in 2 Thessalonians, but if you go back to the first book of Thessalonians, and you look there in chapter 1, again in verse 2 and verse 3, where he writes, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Paul, what are you saying you're thankful for about the Thessalonians? He says, I'm thankful for the work of faith. I'm thankful for your labor of love and that patience of hope. As I look at verse 2, I see there where it says, making mention of you in our prayers. Brethren, we have talked about prayer over and over and over again. Not only in sermons from this pulpit, from Bible classes, but even that personal contact. What is the labor? What is this labor of love? The labor of love is that which allows us to draw one upon another. You see, God's desire is what? That the church be unified, that we all be one. The labor of love is that we exhibit our love and concern for those, as he says in 2 Thessalonians, that are enduring the trials and the tribulations and the afflictions. The work of faith. I'll go back to it. The work of faith is very simply that in which you and I grow spiritually. Spiritual growth doesn't happen by accident. Paul says the Thessalonians were growing spiritually because of their desire to learn. <coughs> Patience. Faith. But again, go back to 1 Thessalonians. Secondly, this morning, Paul says, in chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, 
Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. You see what Paul's thankful for? Paul's thankful for their attitude of acceptance. But not just the attitude of acceptance. He's thankful for the reality that they accepted the truth of God's Word. I'm thankful this morning. Because there was some individual or individuals who loved me enough to share the truth of God's Word that I that I might accept it, obey it, and live it. Are you thankful for the one who shared the gospel with you? I remember very vividly one of the elders of the church in Elizabethtown. And just as our good brother Kenny prays that God will grant time and space for those who are outside of the ark of safety, those who have fallen away, that God will give them the opportunity and the time to come home. My brother Henry McAllister would always pray that he was thankful that someone loved him enough to share the gospel with him. I think about that statement. And I think about what Paul says. Do we love those around us enough to tell them the truth? Do we love those who are around us that are around us that we know are outside of the church, outside that ark of safety? Can we pray that they will accept the truth of God's word before it's everlasting too late? And not only pray fervently about it, but what are we willing to do to take it to them? I am thankful this morning that God has given us a way to communicate with those who are outside. I'm mindful of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, a verse that we're all familiar with. This says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. In righteousness sake. I'm thankful God gave us his word. I'm thankful I can obey. Or perhaps we need to go to 2 Peter chapter 1. And look at verse 20 and verse 21. And in that passage. Peter says knowing this verse. That no prophecy of scripture. Is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Those who wrote the words of Scripture for us were inspired by God, directed to write through the instructions and help of the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful God gave us a way Paul was thankful for the Thessalonians that they were accepting of the truth of God's Word. And then, go back over to 2 Thessalonians in chapter 2 and look at verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Do you realize that God had a plan to save all of mankind, not just select individuals, God had a plan in place by which all men may be saved. And he had it before he ever spoke anything into existence. 
He chose you. God didn't choose us like we choose our spouse. God chose us because he knew the sacrifice that it was going to take to redeem us. You see, before the foundation of the world ever was laid, God knew, Jesus knew, and the Holy Spirit knew the plan. God did his part by sending the Son. Jesus did his part by living and giving his life a ransom on the cross, shedding his blood to purchase our sins. And the Holy Spirit was involved in the fact that he has revealed to us through the inspired word of God what God has done for us before the world was created. Brethren, that is something that we ought to be thankful for just as Paul was thankful for it. Thank God that we have an avenue by which we can be forgiven for our sins. You see, today, I'm thankful just as Paul was Because I believe today, even the events of Thursday made this clear to me. We have a mission. And our mission is to reach out to those who are hurting physically and spiritually. I can't tell you the number of Posts on Facebook. I'm thankful for Facebook too today. Because it is through Facebook that I see how many really care about Chester County and our kids. It is through Facebook that I see how many of you care for those when we post online about those who are in the hospital and in need of our prayers. I'm thankful today for a lot of things. But what does God want from us? God wants us to show our thankfulness and our gratitude to Him. Both in time of good and in time of need. This morning, if you're on the outside of the church looking in, if you are in a lost condition, how can you express your gratitude to God? Can you not express your gratitude by responding to His way in order to be saved? The words which Jesus Himself spoke, not the words of Brother Ray, not the words of someone else, but what does Jesus say that God wants us to do? Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 24, Except you believe that I am He, you will die in your sin. And then he says in Luke 13, verse, chapter 13, verse 3 and in verse 5, except you repent, you will perish. Jesus says you've got to change the way you live. You can't live the way of the world and serve the God of mammon. You've got to choose to serve the God of heaven. And then in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and verse 33, Jesus says, The one who I who will confess me before men, him will I confess before God, my Father, who is in heaven. And then Jesus says, You must be baptized. Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Those are the words of Jesus. Those aren't my words. Those, those, those aren't the words of any other individual sitting here. Those are the words Jesus spoke. And remember, Jesus says he came to do the will of the Father who was in heaven. Jesus was unified in what God's desire was for you to be saved. I'm thankful he's made that way. And God will be thankful. If there's one who needs to do that this morning, would respond and express your thanks to him for the sacrifice he made.
Or perhaps you've done that and you've allowed yourself to wander back into the ways of the world. And this morning you need to come home. You can do that again by repenting, deciding again, I don't like the way things are going. I don't like living in the way of the world. I need to repent, change direction, and come back to living the way of God. With confession of sins on your lips, of a public nature before this assembly, of a private nature between you and God, will you let your brethren pray with you, pray for you? That's what we're here for. From the very first sermon I preached over seven years ago, our goal is to help each other get to heaven. What can we do to help you on your journey? You know you need to take that step out from that pew. We're going to stand. We're going to sing a song to encourage you. The decision is yours. What will it be? Make it while it's standing and while it's singing. Thank you.